So here's a question with a random variable x, which is normally distributed with mean C4, sorry, mean 4 and variance 0.16. So that means that the standard deviation of x is equal to 0.4 because that is the square root of 0.16. All right, with that under the belt, we can go straight into the question and try and answer these questions. What's the probability that x is larger or equal to 4.2? So let's just draw a little sketch. Here we have a normal distribution for x that has a mean of 4 and a standard deviation of 0.4 and we are after the probability and we know that value is to the right and that's all you know where exactly to the right it is to know the probability that that x takes a value larger than 4.2 so the question is what is the size of that probability we know we got to translate that into a standard normal problem because we don't have a table for that x normal random variable but we have a table for the standard normal which is centered around zero so how do we translate that value well, we translate by calculating z is equal to 4.2, the value we are looking for, minus the mean, which is 4, divided by the standard deviation, which is 0.4. So, that means, so here we are looking at the probability that x is larger or equal to 4.2. And that's going to be the same as the probability that z is larger or equal to, and what do we get here? 4.2 minus 4 is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.4 is 0 0.5. So 0 0.5. So we translated this value using this formula into this. Okay? And these two probabilities are the same. So that we can read from the table. So we after this probability. What we can read of the table, of course, is probabilities of the form smaller or equal to. So this value we will get from the table such that that value is 1 minus that probability. Okay, so let's see what we read of the table for 0.5. 0.5 so it's our standard normal table. So 0.5, that's negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is here. So that's 0 0.6915. So this is 0 0.6915. And that means that our blue probability here is 1 minus 0 0.6915. And that is equal to 0 0.3085. Okay, so this probability here is 0 0.3085. So let's move to part B. Again, we do a sketch. We start with a sketch. Here's our x distribution, again centered around 4. And now we are being asked for the probability that we end up between 3.9 and 4.3. And the probability we are after is this probability in here. So let's first translate into the set world. Now we have two values which we need to which we need to translate 3.9 and 4.3. So 3.9, let's do that on the left, z is equal to 3.9 minus 4 divided by 0 
4. So that is negative 0.1 divided by negative 0.4. That's negative 0.25. So that value is negative 0.25. Okay, I'll translate this here. And that 4.3 value, that's 4.3. What does that translate to? So that Z is equal to 4.3 minus 4 divided by 0.4. That is 0.75. Okay, so that's translated here. So what we now need in the Z world, in the standard normal world, is this probability. So let's write that down. That's the probability. Let's write the original one down first. 3.9 smaller than X, smaller or equal to 4.3 is equal to the probability in the Z world that Z is larger than negative 0.25 and smaller than 0.75. So now before we go to the table, we'll try and see how we're going to use the table to calculate that. We're going to calculate, we can read off the table this red probability because it's of the form smaller or equal to, and that is the probability that Z is smaller or equal to 0 0.75. And then to get to our blue probability, we need to subtract this green probability here, right? this probability here. So we subtract the probability that Z is smaller or equal to negative 0 0.25. So in this way, we deconstructed this interval into probabilities which we can both read directly off the table. So let's start with that one. Probability of negative 0.25 set is smaller or equal to negative 0.25. So we are here, negative 0.2, and then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five. This one here, 0 0.4013. 0 0.4013. And now let's look for the uh, red probability. Probability that Z is smaller or equal to 0 0.75. 0 0.75. Here we have 0 0.7. And 5 is that 0, 1, 2, Three, four, five, 0.7734. So that is 0 0.7734. And if we calculate the difference between these two, we get our result, which is 0.3, sorry, 0 0.3, 3721. Okay, this is the size of this blue area here. Okay, and that is of course the same as the size of the blue area in the X world. So this is our answer. And let's move on to part C of the question. So the probability here, let me just copy that. x is smaller than 3.8 that's one event union and probability that x is larger than 4.2 now again let's do a little sketch and that's important here here's our x word our mean is 4, so smaller than 3.8, 3.8 is here, so the probability that x is smaller or equal to 3.8, so that's this probability here, and the probability that x is larger or equal to 4.2. 
which is this probability here. And what we are being asked for is the union of the two probabilities. These are two disjoint events. You can see that. Okay, the no outcome can be in either of these two events. So we can just actually add the probabilities. So that's the same as the probability that x is small or equal to 3.8 plus the probability that x is large or equal to 4.2. But you can only do that because these are disjoint events. Otherwise, we would have to subtract an overlap to avoid double counting. Now, you can perhaps also see that these two events are um, uh, symmetric around the mean. Okay, so if we know one of these two areas, then we know what the size of the other is. And turns out that 4.2 looks familiar because we calculated that here already. We know that the probability of x being larger than 4.2 is equal to 0 0.383085. So what we have here, that is that probability, probability that x is larger or equal to 4.2 is 0 0.3085. And since we are talking about symmetric distribution and 3.8 is just as far away from the mean as 4.2, we know that the size of this probability is also 0 0.3085. So we didn't have to go to the table again, we know that once we add this together, we get 0 0.6170, yeah, 0 0.6170. So that's the end of this question. You could have calculated all of these probabilities as well using Excel, in which case you get slightly different probabilities because Excel is more precise than this table. Okay, this table is only calculated for every one hundredth of one standard deviation. Okay, and Excel can do it more precisely. In an exam, reading off the table will be fine.